Man advances faster every day in the pursuit of scientific knowledge. From the beginning of the universe or the birth of a star, to the origin of life and genetic inheritance, the enigmas of existence have progressively been figured out. However, the human brain, which has allowed man to achieve this knowledge, is still a mystery. practicing hall, a musical quartet is rehearsing several masterpieces. The essence of human intelligence is summarized in music, the perfect combination of reason and emotion. Each member of the group, overflowing with a whirlwind of sensations, uses his memory to remember the piece, glancing at the musical score every once in a while, and concentrating to create a virtuoso performance in unison with his companions. The technique is already subconscious, while their attention is aimed at creating the most moving performance. This is the objective, to provoke an emotion that in this case, the listeners can intimately share, and which arouses sensations of pleasure, and sometimes rejection, in the mind. In order for this to happen, music has needed memory, intelligence, and will. Where are they? And why are they produced? These abilities come from the brain, the corporal organ where all our thoughts and actions are developed. This is also the place where the mind is found, as well as the essence of a person what she thinks, what she feels, and what she imagines. It is the hotbed of sensations and feelings, of images and ideas of each individual human being. Due to its complexity, the brain is one of the territories under scientific investigation with the most mysteries. The basis of its biology is known, as well as some models of its functionality. But yet it's not understood why some things are remembered, while others are not. Why such a strange mechanism like the human mind worries about itself, about the origin of life, and about the meaning of death. We have a lot of data, but what we lack is a theory. What we lack is a way of putting together and integrating the different levels of understanding that we have. So I can give you a beautiful molecular description of the processes that go on when an animal learns, or I think when a human learns as well. But then I go out of the laboratory in the evening and I sit, um, as I will this evening, having seen the pictures in the Prado today, and I will think about the Hieronymus Bosch or the Velazquez, and I will picture them in my mind. And I do not know how I make that memory. And I do not know ever whether the sort of scientific techniques we use in the laboratory can integrate the objectivity of the laboratory with the subjectivity of our unique personal experience of memory. The brain became an object of systematic study during the 19th century, when physiologists and psychologists became immersed in a passionate debate about the possibility that the mind and brain was the same thing. Today, there is no doubt that the physical support of the mind is the brain.
The scientific community, however, is divided among those who defend that the mind and the brain are identical, and those who believe that the mind is much more than the brain. They do certainly not think, the neurobiologists, that brain and mind is the same thing, is identical. Um, they do, however, believe, and this quite firmly, that all the mental phenomena, the psychological phenomena, including consciousness, are an emergent property of the neuronal functions of the brain. So they are functions of the brain, but they are, of course, not identical with the brain. The same relation exists between nervous systems and behavior. Um, the behavior obviously comes out of uh, neuronal interactions, but it is not identical. It needs to be described in a different description system as the molecular processes or the material processes in the brain. So there is a correlation and there is, as we think, also a causal relation between brain processes and mental phenomena, but there is no identity. I think that most people would agree, people who are in this field, that what we call mind is simply the activity of the billions of nerve cells in the brain. The patterns of activity are more or less synonymous with what we call mind. Because for every uh, aspect of the mind, for every percept, every thought, there's a, always an equivalent pattern of neural activity. This is the axiomatic foundation of all our research. The human brain is the result of millions of years of biological evolution, starting with a basic structure, typical of reptiles. On top of this basic brain, more evolved species began to superimpose new layers of tissue with a greater volume until reaching the brain configuration of the Homo sapiens. Therefore, the most primitive part of the brain is the brainstem or reptilian brain which is found connected to the upper part of the spinal cord. It serves to regulate basic vital functions like breathing and metabolism, as well as reactions and automatic movements. This brain does not think or learn. It only mechanically responds to determined signals. For example, an animal's attack mechanisms are activated when it smells prey. With the appearance of the first mammals, the cerebral cortex and limbic system were developed, a new cellular territory that surrounded the brainstem. Two powerful tools for survival appeared with it, learning and memory. Thus, compared to other species, mammals were able to remember a past experience in order to repeat it, or not, in the present. For example, if a specific food was harmful the first time it was consumed, the animal knew what it had to do from that moment on. With the limbic system, emotions multiplied, since this is the primary headquarters for fear and pleasure. When human beings are trapped by desire or anger, when love drives them crazy or fear paralyzes them, in reality, they are under the influence of this part of the brain.